Hey guys, Sensei Jason from showandrew.ca. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I wanna to talk about something that I think is, is very important. Let's just say that you're a white belt and you just learned your first kata. Well, first, congratulations for learning your first kata. You've just taken the first step on this amazing journey uh, of martial arts. But after you've learned the pattern for that first kata, what do you do next? How do you take that kata and how do you make it better? Well, there's a couple different ways, obviously, that you can do this. Many people train for many, many, many years and through practice and repetition and becoming stronger and working on leg strength and core strength, their kata gets better over time as they refine their technique and they understand exactly where their hands need to be and how to coil and how to use koshi and how to use their core muscles, their kata becomes better. But these things take many, many, many years to develop. What if I were to tell you that there are five really simple things that you can do today which will make your kata better today? That's what I want to talk about. I want to just quickly go through these five really simple techniques that you can do right now with very little practice, very little repetition, and it will make your kata better immediately. So stick around, we're gonna go through each one of them, and then if you want, please post a comment at the end of the video and let me know what you think. Right, so there's five things that you can do in your kata right now that will help take your kata from here to here. And the really cool thing about these five things is it doesn't take a tremendous amount of practice. You don't need any special training. It doesn't take a long time to learn. These are things that you can implement right now that will have an impact on your kata right now. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is looking. When you look when you're doing your kata, it gives your kata purpose. It gives you intent and it lets people know that you are taking your kata seriously and that you mean exactly what it is that you intend to do during your techniques. You know, all too often we see people who have maybe a bit of a lackadaisical approach when they're doing their kata and they're not looking and they're not in the right frame of mind and you can tell because they're not looking with intent and they're not using their eyes. So let me give you just a really good and easy example. In the style of karate that I practice, which is show and ru, our first kata is called fuigari ich. And the first technique in this kata is simply a low block. So I would be standing in my yoi position, I would be waiting patiently for my sensei to count. And then when he counts, the first technique that I do is I look, I step to the side, and I execute a low block, okay? So people have a tendency in this particular kata to not really look with intention when they're doing the technique. And that has the impact of making the kata look like it's not very well done. So it might look something like this. They're here and they just sort of step and they block and they kind of look at the same time. It doesn't really have the same impact. So one easy thing that we can do is look first, look with intent, and then perform your technique. So once again, you're standing in your yoi position, the sensei counts, you look, you step, and you execute your block. That's number one. Okay, so the second thing that you can do in your kata right now to make your kata better is balance. Keeping your balance during your kata is very important. It lets everyone know that you are in control of your body, you're moving with intent, you're moving with purpose, and you have control over your technique. It's very, very important. So let me give you a really good example of this. We have another kata in the style of karate shonru that I practice, which is called fuigadani. It's usually the second kata that you would learn as a new student. And in that kata, we have a technique which involves a kick and an elbow. Sounds very simple. So the technique kind of looks a little bit like this. You've done a, you've done a middle block, or chudan uke, and now you're about to do a kick, step through, elbow. Okay, this is a very, Critical moment in the kata where you can show your sensei, demonstrate for yourself yourself, and show your fellow karateka that you have control over your balance. Because what we see very often in this kata is people go to kick, they kind of leave their leg out, and then they sort of tend, they have a tendency to fall into this technique and let gravity sort of pull them down and then they execute their elbow. 
Well, the problem with that is you're not really in control of your body during that free fall moment. You're sort of giving control of your technique over to gravity, and that's maybe not what we want to do. Instead, we want to do our block. We want to maintain balance through the kick. Step when we're ready to step, and then execute that elbow. So maintaining your balance, stepping with purpose, moving when you want to move, and not giving your technique over to gravity is another great way that you can make your kata better right now. Okay, the third thing on our list is perhaps the easiest thing, at least it is uh, to say or to talk about, but could be maybe hard to do. And that is you have to remember to breathe. You know, no matter what <laughs> style of martial arts you practice, we often see people when they're going through their kata, we can tell they're trying really, really hard and they're putting a lot of effort into their kata, but they're forgetting to breathe. They're holding their tech, they're holding their breath during their techniques, and they look really, really tense when they're doing their techniques. This has a couple of impacts. First, it makes your kata look very stiff and rigid when you're doing your techniques, and also, you can get tired out more quickly because you're not breathing. Obviously, you have to breathe in order to get the oxygen to your muscles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So breathing is super important. So one really easy thing to try to remember when you're doing your kata is that when you do your individual techniques, keep your jaw nice and loose, don't tense your neck, and let the air just come out and breathe naturally as you're doing your techniques. If I were to put a noise to this, it might sound something like this. If I'm doing a punch, I'm about to step through and do another punch, and I'll let the air escape. So I come through. Okay, the air is coming out of my body naturally, as opposed to someone who is quite stiff and quite rigid and they're trying to squeeze maybe too hard or they're too stiff and their kata looks like... Well, I'm going to get really tired very quickly there because I'm not breathing. So breathing is very, very important, very easy to do, and you can do it today. Okay, number four on the list is the ki eye. Every kata has them. Some katas have more than one. They're very important, and there's a right way to ki eye, and there's a wrong way to ki eye. I think a ki eye is really an expression of how intensely you're training. The more effort that you put into your ki eye, the more that I know that you're actually trying to do a really good kata. Okay, so try to keep in mind that when we're in the dojo, everybody. Is we're all friends here, we're all training together. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. I've worked with new students who have said, well, you know, Sensei Jason, I'm a little bit shy and I'm a little bit nervous and I really don't want to ki eye in front of these folks because it's a little bit embarrassing. That's a completely natural thing to say and a natural thing to feel. But in the dojo, we're all friends. We're all here to learn together. And you can leave that shyness at the door and you can work with your, with your fellow students and you can feel comfortable. It's not a problem. So when you're doing your ki eye, make sure that you put a little bit of effort into it, okay? I'm gonna demonstrate maybe not such a great ki, and then I'll do what is a good ki, and we'll just talk a little bit about the difference. So if I'm doing some really good technique, and I'm coming through, and I'm doing a really good punch, the punch looks great, everything looks great, but if the ki that I put on that is, you know, a little bit lazy, it takes away from the technique a little bit. I step through, I, uh, that was like kind of a lazy ki eye, and it kind of takes away from the technique a little bit. But on the other side of the coin, if I were to put a lot of effort into that ki eye, it would bring the entire technique to life, and it's something that's easy to do, and it's something that you could do today. So it could sound a little bit like this I'm serious, I'm looking, I'm moving with intent, I've got my balance as we've talked about, I step in and I do a really good ki eye. No problem. It takes that same punch but it brings it to life and it makes the kata as a whole look a little bit better. That's something else that you can do right now to improve your kata. The last thing that you can do right now to make your kata better is really just to have fun. You know, karate can be a very serious thing. A lot of people take karate very seriously and that's great. There's nothing wrong with taking your training very seriously. You come to the dojo, you wanna learn, you wanna grow, you take it very seriously, you put a ton of effort into it. And that's great. And I would say if you are doing that, then keep doing that because your karate is going to get better. 
but at the same time, it's also okay to have fun. You know, we're up here, we're working out, we're getting a good sweat going, you know, we're getting in, we're improving the strength of our bodies, we're improving the strength of our mind, and that's really cool, and that's really fun. And it's okay to express that when you're in class. It's okay to connect with your fellow students. It's okay to try to connect with your teacher, have great conversations with people, make friends, and have fun. So that's it, those are the five things. Look, balance, breathe, a really strong ki, and have fun. These are things that you can do right now that don't take a lot of time to learn, they don't take a tremendous amount of effort to do, but if you do them, they'll make your kata better right now. So thanks for tuning in. Check out the website, showandroot.ca. We've got a lot of really great content and videos up there. If you're in the neighborhood, Oshawa, Ontario, please come by, check out the dojo. Everybody's welcome. Come on in, say hi to one of the instructors, maybe stick around and check out a class. And until then, uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks and take care.